Hey Siri, trigger start van. On it. That's done. Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Smart Van here. I'm pretty excited today to tell you about my new project. I know it's been a while since I last posted, and if anyone's curious what I've been up to, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section, and maybe I'll make a video later um, answering some of your questions. But in the meantime, I really want to get into this project. So here we go. So the basic idea is I want to be able to lock, unlock, and remote start my van from anywhere in the world with Siri on my phone. Before I go into the build itself though, I want to talk about what other existing options there are if you were to try to just do this some other way. So first of all, Ram, the car manufacturer, actually makes a remote start kit for this vehicle. It's just that when I talked to my dealer, they said that they couldn't make it work for some reason. Now, for those of you who you know, know a little bit more about the ProMaster CD, um, it is sort of the US version of an existing van that they sell in Europe called the Doblo and that they converted for the US market. And maybe that has something to do with it, but basically it looked like a dead end as far as getting like a first party remote start kit. The other option is getting a aftermarket remote start kit. Some popular options include Viper and CompuStar. Basically you buy a kit and you install it by tapping a bunch of wires in your car and then you know, this gives you the ability to unlock and remote start your vehicle. And actually, as an example, I have the two-way remote starter over here, which would allow me to lock, unlock, and remote start the vehicle this way if I wanted to. In addition, a lot of these companies will also sell you an option that lets you remote start your vehicle from your phone. So for instance, Viper has a system called Smart Start. And in order to get the kind of basic functionality here, you end up paying about $7 a month or you could pay all at once for three years for $170. But it is an ongoing subscription, so you do end up paying into this thing over time, and it can add up. Um, similarly, there's another company called Drone Mobile, and Drone offers an option which is a little bit cheaper, it's $4 a month, or you could pay upfront for five years, and that will run you $180. But what I'm really excited to share with you today is the fact that my build costs zero additional dollars per month. You will not have to get a subscription fee. And now just have to point out that when I say zero additional dollars, I mean for myself because I already have a wireless point installed in my van. And in fact, if you're curious to see how I did that, I have a video that I'll link to that you can check out there where I explain how to do this installation. But assuming you already have some sort of internet option, maybe it's like a Verizon Jetpack or something like that, which gives you Wi-Fi, then you can easily do the same thing I'm doing here. If you don't have that, and you still want to do something like this, you do have another option, which is to use a, the cellular version of the particle that I'm going to talk about later, and that will run you about $3 a month in data fees. Finally, I just want to point out that this is just the kind of basic option that these companies are selling, and over time I intend on adding a lot more features uh, to this build. For instance, when we start adding GPS, these companies end up charging something like $100 a year for that capability. Whereas I can, guess what, continue to get this for free. So um, I think over time, this is definitely gonna pay off. All right, let's talk about the build now. There's three major parts to this build. Uh, the first is the remote starter kit. As some of you know from my channel, I'm no stranger to you know opening the hood of my car and installing stuff myself. But when I looked at the install instructions for some of these remote starter kits, I decided that it was gonna be a lot of hassle. I didn't wanna buy like a device to program these things if I was only gonna do it once. It honestly looked just like a huge pain to install. So while you can install this thing on your own, I ended up making the decision for myself that I would just go to an installer. So price, the kit itself retails at $200. The install ended up costing $300. And this was the cheapest price I had found in my area and I had contacted five or six different install places. But, you know, obviously this is area dependent. Uh, where you live, it might be cheaper or more expensive, or maybe you know a guy who does a good job with these things, you know? I think you could probably find it cheaper if you wanted to. Uh, so the second part of this is the microcontroller. So I'm using the Photon by Particle.io and I've been following Particle for a while now. I've used their boards in several projects and I really like them. First of all, they're free 
uh, for kind of hobbyist level use. So you can pick up one of these things and you get access to all of their developer tooling, um, their cloud software. You can flash this thing over the internet. Like it's, it's extremely convenient, very well built. There are other manufacturers that will sell you IoT boards or other kind of like microcontrollers that you can use over the internet. Um, honestly, it doesn't matter what you really use here. The final piece is how to trigger it from your phone. So there are also a number of options here. You could use something like If Then Then That, which is a service that I like, uh, which would allow you to create triggers to trigger these things from your phone. I chose to do this with Siri shortcuts, which turns out, and you know, like I haven't been following this stuff super closely recently, but it turns out you can do some pretty powerful things within Siri shortcuts. And so I'm able to remotely trigger this device from Siri shortcuts by just adding a URL, putting in the, you know, access token so that it's secure, and I'm able to uh, remotely send commands to my van. All right, so now let's move on to the build portion of this. So the very first step is to take apart one of these unreasonably expensive remotes. So the kit that I bought came with two remotes and I decided, well, I'm only gonna use this one. The other one, which is a one-way remote, I might as well just take apart and I can use my particle.io photon to trigger it. We'll start by taking apart this Viper one-way remote. You'll notice that the light turns blue when you hit the push buttons. We can pry apart the case with a screwdriver like this, and we'll reveal the circuit board inside. Let's go ahead and take that out and take a closer look. The first thing I noticed is that this thing is powered by two 3 volt watch batteries stacked on top of each other for a total of 6 volt nominal. This means we have a pretty good shot at being able to power this directly from the 5 volt USB source. We can solder wires to the battery terminals here in order to make that happen. These pads are pretty small, so I guess my only advice for soldering them is to work slowly, use flux, and just be very careful. This is the other side of the board. I did some testing here and I found that applying 3.3 volts digital out from the particle board would be enough to trigger these buttons. On the microcontroller side, I'm using pins 2 through 4 as digital out. and be sure to also connect these pins to ground through a resistor. Uh, the reason is that you don't want these inputs to be left floating if the microcontroller is off. All right, well, once you connect all the wires up, you should have something that looks like this. You'll see I have power and ground going to the five volt source here, and I have each of the pins connected to one of the digital outs that I mentioned earlier. In the future, I'm probably gonna want to make this a little bit more clean, but for prototyping, this is fine. This is the code that I'm using on the Photon. I'm not gonna go over it in much detail and I'll link to it in the description below. The general gist here though, is that I'm creating a cloud function which receives an input string and I'm checking that string to see which button I should invoke. And depending on the button that is specified, I'm going to digital write high for some fixed duration and then write low afterwards. And that in effect will be triggering the buttons. All right, so the final piece in all of this will be to use Siri shortcuts to trigger the particle function that we just defined. So over here, I have my Siri shortcuts app open and I have buttons, three different buttons for each of the functions that I wanna trigger on the remote start. Each of these shortcuts is relatively simple. It just defines the keyword that I'm gonna to send to the particle and it invokes another shortcut, which I kind of use as a library function. Here's the shortcut I created that does all the work, basically. So it takes input, right, which is what we previously defined as text, and then you plug in just a couple of variables, like the access token and the device ID. Next, the shortcut is going to trigger the cloud function by making a post request to this particle API, and you can see that it's passing in the data that we want to send to the device, as well as the access token for security. Once we have the result from Particle's API, we're going to read a few fields to determine what happened. So first of all, if the device was connected and the return code was greater than zero, then we say, okay, great, everything was successful. Otherwise we say, oh shoot, for some reason the device didn't accept our command, maybe it was a typo. 
And finally, if there is no connection at all, then we say SmartVAN was disconnected. So let's give that a try. I tap the button and I get a response, just as I expected. In this case, I disconnected the board, so Particle said that it was disconnected. All right, let's plug the hardware into the van and I'll show you a demo of how everything works end to end. Hey Siri, trigger start van. On it, that's done. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions that I didn't cover in this video, go ahead and leave them as a comment and I'll get back to you.